Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today I'll be showing you the guns to use as a lower level player later on in a patch cycle. If you're starting relatively fresh or simply getting back into Tarkov before the next wipe, whenever that will be, then this video is for you because the standard progression rules and advice given to players that broadly keep up with the pace of the player base don't necessarily apply to those starting late. The usual milestones that I suggest of questing until level 15 and then accessing 545 PP from Prepor 2 and then moving up to M856A1 for 556 using Peacekeeper's questline is tailored to the standard white progression. This focuses on beating early class 4 armor in particular, so it's not really fit for purpose in the latter half of a patch when many players are using either better class 4s or class 5 completely. It can still work, but especially before the flea market, I think that we're better off using one of two approaches. Leg meta, i.e. shooting players repeatedly in the legs where no armor can be used, which bypasses the enemy's protection advantage completely, or a carefully selected handful of powerful cartridges that are accessible early but can still perform when facing off against superior kits. Starting with what's available at PMC level 1, there are more leg meta options than anything else, and this really applies to everybody up until the flea market. A personal favourite of mine is the PPSH, as it comes with 35 rounders by default, with the option of upgrading to a drum magazine even at Prapor 1, which has a terrifying 1000 RPM fire rate and usable high damage bullets LRNPC from Jaeger 1. It pulls to the left when you shoot and it has quite a strong muzzle flash, but if you can manage these, it's a very capable player killer, and comes with the added bonus that it's impossible to jam due to how it's implemented in the game right now. My advice would be to get really close to people and just don't ADS, just use the hip fire only and spray at people's feet. If you're looking for something a bit more comfortable then the Keda B is another great option. Suppressed out of the box with lower recoil than many other weapons, minimal muzzle effects and also really cheap. It comes with a single 30 round magazine so you'll have to use the 20s for any spares but the PSV cartridge is another one accessible at Jaeger 1. This has the second highest damage of all of the 9x18 caliber. We also have the shotguns. You can choose anything here but I prefer the semi-auto one if possible, so repaired 153s, 155s and Saiger 12s are preferable if you can find them out in the world. Otherwise, the revolver is probably the next best option that you can actually buy. Using any of the buckshot cartridges technically has the ability to take down PMCs in two blasts to the legs, so at close range these can be absolutely devastating, and one interesting feature of leg meta as we progress through the late wipe is that more and more players are likely to be using thorax only armour. In the top tier of protection, there are actually far fewer stomach coverage vests available, and shotguns will absolutely murder players who don't have this because of the one and a half times multiplier once the stomach gets blacked. As an added sweetener, you probably will avoid damaging their armour too, meaning that you can just swap straight over to it or take it out of the raid completely unharmed. Now clearly at level 1 there are very few high powered rounds available, naturally, but the main one that is accessible is 762x54R LPS from Prapor which you can use in the Mosin. If you can get used to the peekaboo playstyle that comes with using a bolt action, it's a formidable weapon even at level 1 with iron sights, as the armour damage that it deals is very significant even against class 5 armours. It has a 90% chance to two shot any class 4, and against the cheaper class 5 armours that players often where you have a 10% chance to two-shot them to the thorax and nearly a guaranteed three-hit kill failing that. The Mosin isn't for everyone, but it can certainly level the playing field when used correctly. All other weapons I feel fall somewhere in the middle. They're okay for headshots, but they will underperform against armor that you classically see on players at this point in the wipe, and it will leave you frustrated at times, which is why I recommend going to the extremes with our selection for either leg meta or really big bullets even though we're using a bolt action, as this gives the best chance against other players. Focusing on questing with these guns should get you to level 50. 15, the flea market and rep depending our first set of level 2 traders. With regards to the flea, this comes down to the ammunition that we can buy as to what weapons are going to be best now. The best all-round conventional cartridge that is accessible on the traders themselves at this stage is probably 545 BT, which can be got as a box of 30 by bartering two large beef stews with prep or two. To make this go further, I generally recommend using 20 545 PP underneath and 10 BT on top to maximize them across three magazines. And while PP is usable, BT again does a significantly increased amount of armor damage against class 5 that shortens the time to kill quite dramatically. This can be used in any AK-74 style rifle, but one that can be nice early is the AK-74 UN from the flea market. It's nowhere near as expensive as the UB, which is technically the strongest one due to the lower horizontal recoil, but the effect is quite marginal. You'll find the UN often as cheap as the regular 74U, whilst in turn having better stats than the standard one, and a side mount for optics like the Cobra EKP. Picking back up where we left off with the Mosin and 762x54R, access to the flea market allows players to use the SVD, 
While this is a relatively expensive base weapon due to Punisher Part 6, which is a quest that requires its specific use, as the only semi-auto weapon in this caliber, it is very scary to all players. LPS is still workable in this gun, and technically the next bullet up in pen terms, PS can be bought from the flea market too, which two shots runs 90% of the time, and also gazelles two thirds of the time, which is pretty insane. Without significant modding, the SVD does have high recoil, so it is best used at medium ranges and longer, but the ability to take follow-up shots with 50 for our bullets so early is super good. Another wildcard alternative here is the VPO 209 with the 366 APM cartridge. This ammo also can be bought on the flea market and although it is often very expensive, it is a really powerful bullet in its own right, two-shotting all class 4 armors and three-shotting the class 5s as well. The 209 has a much higher base recoil compared to other AK style weapons to balance this out, but it mods out cheaply given that it shares the AK parts, such as a bastion rail cover for mounting sights. Now you might be wondering where the SMGs are at this level, but they're in a bit of a funny spot here. The available ammunition for these guns generally doesn't have enough pen to deal with armor until later on, some of the damages are too low for leg matter, and often we run into magazine access problems as well. If you are committed to hitting headshots only, then you can basically use whatever gun you want, but I think leg matter is probably the best way to position this type of gun, as you can still go for headshots as well, so long as you don't hit helmets. This means that we're looking for high rates of fire, high bullet damage, and preferably low recoil. The SR2M with PE bullets and the P90 with SS198LF feature this classic combination, dealing 80 and 74 damage respectively and are available at level 2 traders, but many of the other SMGs have too low damage for leg meta to be consistent enough to use the bullets that are sensibly available. Even for these two weapons, you'll have to buy the 30 rounders for the SR2M or the standard P90 50 rounder from the flea market, as you can't buy them from Prapor or Peacekeeper until level 3. The P90 is actually a decent consideration though, given that it comes with a 50 rounder as standard and it can be bartered in a useful configuration at peacekeeper level 2 for two military cables requiring just a sight to make it work. The MP9 and the MP9N are tempting in theory because of their high fire rate and 30 round magazines on peacekeeper 2 but the high damage rounds of RIP, Quakemaker and Luger are only accessible at higher level traders as well. While these bullets can be bought on the flea market they are normally too expensive for lower level players to stomach using them with the fire rates that we're talking about but you can have a go if you like. One of the biggest issues with this kind of loadout is that you have to fight scavs as well with them. If you are fighting players only then it's kind of okay, but it can be challenging for budget kits aiming for death by fire volume to deal with fighting scavs alongside other players. Likewise for point .45, we have Hydra Shock at Peacekeeper 2, which has awesome damage at 100, but the weapon choices are either the UMP with its slow fire rate, which is not really ideal for shooting at legs, or the Vector with only 13 rounds in the basic magazine due to the 30 rounders being on Mechanic 3 or an expensive barter at Skier 2. Finally, let's look at the level 20 milestone of Hideout Workbench 2 and Mechanic 2. This opens up a range of possibilities due to ammo crafts, firstly being M856A1. This is one of the cheaper crafts, costing around 600 rubles per bullet, and enables the use of the MDR, which is my preferred 556 weapon at this stage given the lack of modding required. 56A1 will deal with class 4 perfectly well, but it does struggle a bit with class 5, however it does make up for it somewhat because of its controllable full auto. Next is the M80 craft, which by itself is very expensive at around 4000 rubles per bullet, but using this with the RFB offsets it somewhat because that weapon is so very cheap. Totally overlooked this patch because of the ammo dynamics that pushed M80 and the other good rounds to endgame trader levels, you can barter one for two gas analyzers at Skier 2, which in turn can each be bartered for a CPU fan, which which means that you can snag an RFB for as cheaply as 20,000 rubles, which is pretty insane. Stacking M80 with this patch's buffed BCP FMJ will allow your crafted ammo to go further, as you won't lose it all when you die, at the expense of some power in certain situations, but the new stats on FMJ is really not terrible. We also get the ability to craft SNB now for the SVD again, which at level 20 is probably the most powerful ammo that can be accessed. This drops all players wearing any armor, even class 6, in two hits to the thorax, so if you're concerned about high tier players then this is probably by far the best choice early on. We also have the ability to craft SP6 for the VSS, which is another relatively expensive base weapon but needs next to no modding. SP6 performs similarly to 762 BP, one of Tarkov's meta bullets, so this is one of the most powerful full auto weapons that can be used early. Although the 30 rounders are probably out of reach, the 20s can be bought on the flea market or bartered at Prap War 2 for a tech manual. Manuals can be found on fence cheaply sometimes as well, so keep an eye out here if you want to go down this route. Once you've crafted some SP6, you can actually then use this to make 366 APM that we talked about earlier for the VPO 209, which is kind of an alternative to M80. 
Using our crafted ammo takes the overall cost down to only 1000 rubles per bullet, which might be preferable to spending somewhere between 1.5 to 2k per round on the flea, depending on your outlook. So with the full rundown of all the possible weapons sorted that I think are sensible, let's take a few minutes to look at armour. My thoughts here are, don't bother spending too much. My philosophy is that you have to buy at least class 4 to compete with the average player's bullets, and lower than this it's purely for scav shotgun protection. So get the cheapest possible armour that you can, simply for anti-buckshot coverage of your chest, i.e. the packer, until you get to the flea market, and afterwards pick the cheapest available. At skier level 1 there is a barter where you can grab the Zhuk 3 class 3 armour for less than most class 2s, which is an option given that it doesn't cost you anything extra to get one extra armour class, but to move up to even the worst class 4 ceramic armor generally costs at least 50,000 rubles on the flea and is unlikely to be worth it at this stage in the wipe. As for helmets, it's personal preference whether to use them or not, but I simply wouldn't bother. Just make sure that you have a face cover to make yourself less visible behind bushes, but I would always use a headset even if it's the cheap GSSHs. If you do want a helmet, then I normally recommend the Ratnik from Ragman 1 for two bleaches with the barter, as it's typically only 20k, and it won't get taken often by other players. On that note, insurance for low tier gear is very powerful at this stage of the patch, as few players will take a Packer, Zhuk 3, unmodded shotguns, PPSHs, class 3 helmets, etc, etc, as they simply aren't worth the slots or the weight for the most part. Use this to your advantage, and and cycle kits through insurance and keep stuff in Prapple for as long as you're able to if you're a standard account player so that you don't run out of space in your stash. One other tip is if you're needing something common like a 30 round AK mag but don't have access to it yet, try looking on Fence. He seems to have much more stuff this wipe and you might even find some items there that you simply can't buy at your trader level. It can sometimes come at a steep premium but occasionally the option is available and is worth it. So next, if you were wondering how to make the PPSH slay, go and check out the dedicated video that I did with more detail. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.